There are times, I think, when we come to church and we sit in a place like this and we realize that we don't always like the other people that are around us. But I think sometimes that's simply because we haven't necessarily gotten to know them all that well. Maybe there are some hidden attributes about those people that we tend to exclude or other from ourselves. Now, my parents live at the top of a coulee in southern Alberta, and this leads down to the Old Man River. Now, the coulees leading into the river bottom get their start at the end of the last ice age, when a lone glacier apparently roiled down the prairies, cutting a channel into the rich black soil. Over the years, this channel was changed into a valley with coulees lining its edges. Now, at the bottom of my parents' coulee is a large patch of thistles. And there are very few weeds which frustrate a farmer more than thistles. Some say that thistles can regrow if even a quarter of an inch of root is left in the ground, and that thistle seeds can remain in the soil for decades before a timely rain makes them spring from the earth. This patch of thistle, though, is extremely beautiful. The green, spiny stems which bear the purple flowers on their heads, the vibrant colors which give way to gorgeous white down bearing the seeds thistle seeds, which are the beloved food of finches. Now for me, weeds are simply plants that are not in the place that you want them to be. Some of them are invasive species and these kinds of things, and I get that that's not good. But Ralph Waldo Emerson has a different definition. He says, what is a weed? It is a plant whose virtues have yet to be discovered. And thistle seeds are the beloved food of finches. And so sitting out in my parents' front lawn, looking out over that patch of thistles, I can appreciate them for more than just their beauty. Because without those thistles and their seeds, there would be no beautiful flashes of yellow which dart around the yard. See, too often I think we're blind to the value of things because we refuse to really look at them. Too often we are blind to the value of people because we refuse to truly look at them. Every time we villainize another people group, someone who's different than us, someone who does not live like we do, someone who doesn't keep their house as clean, or maybe someone who comes from a different cultural background, someone who thinks about God differently than we do, someone who lives differently than we do, every time we villainize them and cast them out as someone other, not worthy of our time, we refuse to really look at them. Who is the other in your life? The person that you don't like? The person that maybe you disagree with? The person that maybe you come to sit in a space like this with? Someone with whom you might be sharing communion this coming Sunday, which is what we prepare to celebrate together here. The Lord's Supper or the Eucharist, whatever you want to call it, where we come to the table that is presented for us by our God and given a gift of grace, recognizing that he called us to be his people and he feeds us and nourishes us because of what Jesus has done. And so maybe, just maybe, that person that you don't particularly like, that you don't think is worthy of your time or attention, maybe they're just a person whose virtues have not yet been discovered by you. So take time today and this weekend to really look at others, to try and discover the virtues that God has planted in all people. After all, we are all made in His image.